Hey, Mike with Nerd Problems Gaming here, the channel where we go through the good and bad of everything nerdy to make sure you spend your time on the best of the best. And in today's video, I'll be doing a review of Castlevania The Adventure for Game Boy. So let's get into it. So this game came out in 1989 on the original Game Boy. And this game came out just after the original Castlevania and Castlevania Simon's Quest on NES. And so instead of following the storyline of those games, you actually play as Christopher Belmont, an ancestor of Simon Belmont from the original two games. And so in this game, you take on four Dungeons of Darkness and eventually face off with Dracula in the final battle. And so this is a very simplified Castlevania game where you don't have all of the extra features that you normally have in the NES or later Game Boy games that came out in the series. And so with this game, you're really just limited to your whip and you have three states of your whip. You have the original leather whip, you can upgrade to a longer chain whip, and then when you get to the third stage, your chain whip will actually fire a fireball. And with this game as well, you are limited with the number of items that you can pick up and find. Power up Christopher as you play. And so you have the orbs that will power up your whip, pick up gems or crystal sort of things that give you more points. And then you'll also pick up hearts. So instead of being like other Castlevania games where you find various treasure hidden in blocks and walls, finding some chicken legs in walls, in this game you just pick up hearts and then that refills your life as you play. This game has some cool mechanics to it as well and was the first game to my understanding to implement rope climbing. But one thing with this game compared to Castlevania 2 Belmont's Revenge that came out on the Game Boy after this one, you can't actually use your whip while climbing ropes. And so at times that can be a little bit frustrating where you have to actually jump off of the rope to use your whip, even if enemies are coming at you. On top of that, in that second game, there are only certain enemies that could hit you to reduce the power of your whip. But in this game, if any enemy hits you, your whip actually will go down a level in strength. And so that can get very frustrating at points where you actually need to almost be flawless to make it to Dracula and the end of the game. Because at certain points, the enemies are almost impossible, taking five to six hits with the weakest whip, but only three to four with the stronger whips. And so if you mess up and get hit in any of those stages, it becomes nearly impossible and you need to have almost a perfect run to be able to make it to the end of the game. Now with that said, I think it has such a high difficulty level just for the fact that the game is very short. So there is only four levels and you make it to the final boss at the end of the four levels and face off with Dracula. And again, Dracula can be incredibly difficult as well unless you memorize the pattern of the various forms as you fight him. But despite being very hard, the gameplay is fun. You feel like you're playing Castlevania. I just don't necessarily enjoy that. It's kind of a trimmed down version where you don't have any sub weapons in this game. There isn't any secrets hidden in the walls. And I don't necessarily enjoy losing the power of the whip every single time you get hit. I liked it a lot better in the second Game Boy game that came out where there was only certain enemies that did that. The music is great in this game though and holds up to the Castlevania standard of having great music. And so I think if you really enjoy the Castlevania series, you want an extra hard challenge, and don't mind playing a game with a little bit of limited graphic capabilities, Castlevania The Adventure is a fun game to check out and play. And if you do have the Castlevania collection, this is one of the games that is included on it. So if you want to check out this one, it's pretty fun to play, but it is very short once you master the game and it might only take you 30 to 45 minutes to beat the whole thing start to finish if you have a great run. But you're bound to mess up a lot as you learn and get through the learning curve of this game, so you'll spend a little bit of time on this. So if you're a diehard Castlevania fan or you want an extra challenge, I'd recommend checking out this game. But let me know in the comments below if you guys have played Castlevania The Adventure, how you think it holds up to the other Castlevania games. For me, this is probably on the bottom of the pile, but it is still pretty fun and worth checking out. But let me know in the comments below how you feel about this game. And if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button as it really helps out the channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so yet and turn on the bell notifications to get the latest updates of new nerd videos we put out. And if you'd like to help us support the channel, pick out content and more, become a patron of ours at nerdproblemsgaming.com forward slash Patreon. And if you'd like to plug into our live streams and less plays we do on the channel, you can follow us on Twitch at nerdproblemsgaming.com forward slash Twitch. But once again, thanks for tuning in and we'll talk to you more soon.